You ever have one of those jobs where you say, wow, that escalated quickly. <laughs> well, here we are, 2002 Chevrolet Yukon. No, yeah, it's Yukon XL 1500. This is the front axle, or what's left of it. I uh, came in, bunch of service work, doing a bunch of service work, had a leaking differential seal on the short side, so a driver's side. This seal, uh, yeah, was leaking. This is where the vent goes, this is where you fill it, this is where you drain it. No big deal. Boom, pop the axle out, pull the little stub axle out, pop the seal out. Well, that's when it all went bad. Because once we popped the seal out, this little guy right here hit the drain pan. And this is just a little chunk of metal or kibbles and bits as we call them as they fall out. And all it is, is one of these, which GM kindly sent me 10 of them when I ordered two. They're a bearing lock retainer, is all they are. It's supposed to be T-shaped. Well, this is just the very end off from one. So there's that, these are about 90 cents. <laughs> and here you are, that'll be 90 cents for your parts, sir, and $400 for labor. Or something like that, I don't know what the labor is, but just, just guessing. Um, in either case, tore it out, split it apart, it's gonna be no big deal, we're gonna boom, boom, pop that thing in. Well, once I tore it out, then I saw some other problems, and I'll show you those. All right, and that was this here. And the thing is, I didn't really drive the truck prior, so I don't know how much noise there was, but I don't know if you guys will be able to see that. Hopefully it focuses, but that's what one of the carrier bearings look like. And that thing is a nightmare. So she's all cratered up. Oddly enough, as bad, badly pitted as this bearing is, you know, these bearings here, the race that went with this one really wasn't too bad. So you look at the race, I mean, it has some spalling on it, but you know, you, you would think it would kind of match that bearing, but it don't. And then the other side of the carrier, just the opposite, the bearing looks, you know, decent. I didn't go over it with a fine tooth comb. Just with a coarse tooth comb, it looks pretty decent. However, just the opposite, the bearing race was all pitted to pieces. So long story short, they got a couple carrier bearings. I'm thinking, boom, yeah, we're good. So here we are. Um, I'd already pulled these off, wanted to get numbers off and make sure everything was cool. And then, so I pulled them off the carrier already and then just pressed the new ones on. It's new bearings, new races. So that's the easy part. Now, the hard part is we've got to pop it back together. And while I had it apart, of course I had to clean all the housing up and everything, uh, I did pop out the pinion, not that there was anything going on with it, but I just wanted to inspect, you know, the pinion bearings and both pinion bearings and pinion bearing race were in good shape. So we're going to reuse those and uh, we'll get started here. I did have to get a new crush sleeve. So there's the old crush sleeve here. So I got a new one of those, so we shouldn't be able to mess it up too awful bad. What's up, Mrs. O? You have a lady here that called. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll be back in an hour. And we're back. And that's the code the car had. 752-877-987. Saturn. Had some training problems. Anyhow, so we're going to start assembling this. Um, I'm not a differential expert, so if you came here for expert differential advice, I can't give you any. Um, now, see, they sound terrible in the housing because it's all echoing out and they're, well, frankly, the bearings are all dry right now. Um, so what we have to do is install the pinion bearing, pinion assembly, and then we have to tighten it down to crush the crush sleeve. And then we have to measure the amount of rotational force it has and fortunately for us when I was looking in service data eating lunch uh, GM does have specs on new and used bearings and the amount of rotational force uh, each of them should have so uh, so we're going to go off that we're just going to put it together and look at data I'm going to draw this in with the nut just just enough before we put our seal and stuff in here get our bearing push back on there Take a nut back off. Oh. Just dropped a nut. And then we're going to put the washer on. Which way did it go? Stick that right up there. All right. Let me go get 
awesome data. And as we tighten that crush bearing, or the crush sleeve, it's going to start taking the play out of this to a perfect point. However, before we get too hog wild, we should be wise and install our seal. We've got a seal here from Napper. Not a sponsor. There's our new pinion seal. Stick that up here. We'll give her a couple love taps. Let's get her started. I swear that phone is going to get some flying lessons today. We're going to use our pinion seal installer slash axle nut socket. Trust me. Put a little bit of grease around the seal here. All right, make it nice and smooth. We have our crush sleeve in there, right? Did I put that on? Let's hope I did. Our pinion here where the bearing rides is pretty nice. Loctite on that. This is she doesn't come back off. This stuff is terrible. Don't ever buy it. Loctite, good. Loctite in a lipstick, too bad. <sighs> That'd have been safe just leaving this all together, but you know, hate to be ashamed to tear this thing apart and not know if the bearings are any good. Just a little more. You don't want to go too much. You go too much, you're going to be using the second one in the two pack you bought. It only takes a little bit. Ooh, right there. See, the plate's just out of it right now. I don't feel any plate. So now we're going to have to look up the rotational torque value and we might have to tighten it up a smidge more. Let's do that before our Loctite dries. All right, I found the magic spec. But, before I get too far here, I do want to take, my, my pop that back off. We're going to put a little more Loctite on it. Uh, good practice is to seal the end of the pinion here so oil doesn't migrate up the center of the shaft. Now, you don't see it too often. Uh, it's an easy problem to correct. Uh, GM's a big fan of putting sealant all around the splines and then, you know, pushing on uh, the yoke. Or you can take, we, like I said, I should have done this in the first place, but I didn't know how easy that crush washer was going to crush. Uh, we're just going to take some silicone, just some sealant, RTV, whatever you want to call it. And you go right around where the washer sits, and that's going to seal up anything coming up past those splines. And you can't really overdo it you know put enough on there so when you put your washer on it's gonna flatten it out in there like I say, it's, it's not too often that the, uh, the oil does migrate up past it but this will prevent a future problem make sure we put that on the correct way so that goes on then uh, like I said we've got a little little ahead of ourselves here Put a little more red lactate on it. And it's 10 to 20 inch pounds is what they say for used bearings. Rotational force. And that is actually lubricated. So we're going to put a couple droplets of the gear oil in there to lubricate our bearings. Okay. Which I don't think we're even close to that just yet. What do we have here? We've got some Amtoil in a bag. 
7590, extreme, oh, severe. Your oil in a bag. So we're gonna use this because this is what we have right now. Hands right now. Stick that up there. I wasn't sure if that rotational spec was going to be lubricated or not. I made that big enough. So we're gonna go, we're gonna put a little bit of gear oil so it gets on our bearings. Stick that bag to the side. Yeah, we'll pick it up. Get a little bit on that bearing. And it's already coming out the front bearing inside the housing here. So our bearings are nice and lubed. So we have a reading that is accurate. We're just gonna go along with the service specs here. So let's stick this on here. You won't see what our rotational force is. See if we fall in that 10 to 20 mark now that the play is gone. And we'll use our little inch pounder here. The beam wrench would probably work a smidge better. So let's see. Let's see what the magic number is. So 25. So this is 0 to 50. So 25 is right there. So we want to be, you know, somewhere in there. A couple little matches up. Let's see what it does. It doesn't even wiggle the needle. So we're going to give it just a couple little blops. You can go too far too quick. So. We might actually have to use something with some force. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if this impact's gonna have enough pizzazz. Yeah, we're starting to get some resistance now. Honestly, when I tore this thing apart, it felt like it was way too heavy. That's why I assumed that the bearings in there were going to be no good, but let's see where we're at now. So, what do we got here? Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and we are about 15 there. Let me enhance. Here we are zoomed in. All right, so we are zeroed out. So, as I rotate this pinion, we'll watch that needle. Oops, there we go. Let me get so I can hang on to the thing here. Alright. Oh, where are you at here? You ready folks? So I'm rotating it and our rotational force is between 15 and 20 inch pounds as I bring it around town. Oh, can you guys see? Where's where's the light? Where's the light coming through here, folks? I suck at this. Let me just turn the light off. Oh, it's them lights over there. Never mind. At some point, guys, you're gonna have to trust me. We got about 15 pounds of rotational force there. Hopefully you can see it. 15 inch pounds. So that's how you do that. So there we are, we're good. So what we want to do now is what we originally came here to do. Why on earth GM sent me 10 of these? I'm not sure. I only sent through two on my order slip. Maybe it's buy two, get eight free. Let's take a couple of these out. And they're gonna go down in the case here. The sucky part is, like this breaks up, breaks off when you try to bend it over. Now we're you know now we're in big trouble. So this is going to sit down inside here, inside the housing. Hopefully you can see that it sits right in there. You'll it's kind of obvious how it sits with the T. So we'll stick that in there. Then we need to get one of our adjusters. So these are our little adjusters here. We're going to take and screw this together. And I don't have the special service tool to make the adjustment on these. Now these are gonna move your carrier bearing side to side. But what I did have is a 32 millimeter socket and some quarter inch uh, keyways. So I made my own socket for adjusting these because I checked into the tool uh, to do this and the tool is like a hundred and some bucks. So I kept more tool, but uh, this was like 25 cents. So that's that there. We want to make darn sure you can see we're indented on the old one. We're going to take and drive this down in. I got it screwed all the way in. I'm going to set that down in the housing. All right. Now, what we need to get is our axle nut socket, a different one, one that's big, a big one for this job. We're going to tap it in its spline. Don't get 
two fingers there, fella. So there's that. That's all beat down in. Now technically when we flip this over, there's our, there's our lock tab sticking up right there. Now you know what I wasn't thinking with my fancy tool. There, Mr. Fancy Pants. Is that it's gonna hit the lock tab. Sorry. It's up against the lock tab right now. We're probably gonna have to back the lock tab off a little bit. Let me get a socket ratchet thing. So I'm driving it in the housing. Obviously gave it some clearance issues. Be able to do what we need to do anyways okay so i want to back it out just want to make sure it's spinning okay make sure our tool works properly we're not in here with screwdrivers trying to meet it you know back and forth i want to back this back out because i want to see if i can get the backlash somewhat close before we put this thing together Back it out, all right. Because what that's going to do is, as we screw this thing in and out, it's going to move our bearing race in and out. So I'm going to make sure that's drove back in the housing all the way. So that's in the housing. And then what we need is our bearing race. And this is over here on this side where you can't see. We're going to get our bearing race in the housing here. sitting there just gingerly. We're gonna put just a smidge of oil on that, whichever one of these is open. There's this one, yep. So we'll put just a little bit of gear oil on there. And what we'll do is we'll flip it around, set it in the case, just to see if it's way too deep right from the get-go, which it is. All right, so that's way, way too deep. We don't have any, well, I guess I can't say that because I guess we do need the other case half on. So before we get excited, I was hoping it worked better in my mind, but obviously this needs to be held straight in the other bearing before we can start, you know, seeing how much backlash we have. Of course, with used gears, we have to set it up, you know, where the gear was. And unfortunately with that lock tab broke, the adjuster, you know, had backed itself off, made everything loose. Um, so that's kind of the predicament we're in. So I guess we can take and set this thing to the side. And then there's a certain amount of torque that needs to be applied to set the preload on those bearings. So I think in this case half we'll do the same thing. We will get our new lock piece here. Move you guys over where you can see it. And I'll pick it up where you can see it. Ooh, Pop Pop's got you. That's going to go right in there like that, all right? It's a, kind of an a shame that we have to do this for such a cheap little part, but it's probably good that we did. Make sure we have this one screwed in so we have maximum play. You can see that where that T sticks up just a little bit, it actually gouges into the end of this retainer just a little. You can see where the original marks are. Freely, and it does. 
a little freer than the other one. The other one might have been a little cattywampus, but I think it was that side of the housing that spun hard originally when I was first taking it apart. All right, so that's in there. happy. We'll put a little bit of gear, gear lube on that other bearing. And then we're going to have to assemble these case halves without any sealant at first to get our get everything set. Which kind of stinks because you got to put together and take it apart. Uh, Alright, there's that. There's some gear lube on there. Then we will let them mate. Talk nice to it now, baby. to take apart. Should've cleaned up her dowel holes, but I didn't. Nope, nope. Stick it outside. I want to make sure that carrier has plenty of play in it. And it does, okay. Just wanted to make sure. to do is get all the bolts kind of put it all back together and right now it should have a ton of play in it and it does so that's good that's what we want our adjusters on the side should be loose and they both are these are kind of a tricky thing to set backlash and stuff in because you have to set the backlash based on the pinion so we'll measure we'll hold the ring gear and then we'll have to measure pinion backlash and then you have to multiply that times two right I think that's how you do it something like that so we can set our backlash and then we'll check our gear tooth pattern hopefully that's going to be good but yeah let me get the bolts Okay, okay. So here we are. Now what do we do? I don't have a clue. But we're pretty good guessers, so we have lots and lots of play. What we're gonna do, we could check service data, but we're gonna get pretty close before we do that. What I wanna do is I'm gonna start running this side over. We're going to start pushing them, pushing the ring gear over, start getting rid of some side plate here with our fancy homemade tool. But we don't want to go too far because, because we don't. We reach down in the hole here. Oh, she feels almost perfect. But now that we've got that one tightened up a little, I do want to tighten up this side here because this, this is what's going to dictate our adjustment. I want to make sure that our bearing race is starting to push out. I'm going to go a little bit tighter than I should just to make darn sure our bearing race is pushing, pushing out. play is probably three or five thousandths or so okay yeah that's definitely tight so I want to back that back off now now that I know for a fact that our race is coming out of the housing back it back off Now 
just snug it up ever so gingerly. What a pain. How on earth we're supposed to measure backlash without moving that ring gear. We gotta find a way to jam up the ring gear. Because it can't reach in there with a you know a feeler gauge or a dial indicator rather. Which that would be nice if I had one of those finger ones, but I don't. Oh well. Let's we gotta figure it out. So let me get specs on everything here, see what what things are supposed to be tightened to and GM's recommendation on setting backlash. Now this one should be snug too. Yeah, that one's pretty snug, okay. I mean, we, we gotta be damn close, I'll tell you that. I give her one of these and I can tell. Cause I'm an old mechanic, not really. But our backlash right now is minimal. Let me look up the specs, how to do it, and all that now that we've got it somewhat close. Our case half is together. I think that was supposed to be torqued like 35 foot pounds. Our little impact we're using, it's gotta be right close to that. It's pretty weak sauce. Right, so first thing first, being that we do have some backlash, we need to make sure that these are torqued because we wanna set a rotational force first so we know where we're going. So these are supposed to be torqued to 55 foot pounds. You know what? We need to turn this where we'll pop up and see. There we go. There we go. Now let's see. Oh boy, those are tight. Holy mother of pearl. Good night. It's supposed to be 55. We got some pretty little baby. Should be moving our ring gear for us. Okay, let me go on the other side. We'll twirl that one for a little bit. Just to be on the safe side. Because then what we do is when we make adjustments, we can move each one one notch at a time and technically our preload should stay the same. I'll try to fight gravity, fella. You'll lose every time. It's the law. There's 45. Stay alive. Let's see where our rotational torque is right now. Because we're about 45 on both sides. Now we're supposed to be, according to the service data, is 25 to 45 inch pounds of rotational mass, of rotational torque. So let's see, where's my big socket? Evan, we grab, open up that big drawer there, buddy, on the top, all the way to the left, the biggest chrome socket in there, an inch and a quarter, chrome ones. Hurry up, quick, like a bunny. All right, good job. So 25 to 45, so I just want to see where we're at here. Oh, we're still quite light. We're well within limits. Rotational, we're about 25. Roughly, it kind of hovers around that 25 mark. So we're going to keep tightening them down here. Need my adapter. We might have to lock this in a in device to achieve the spec we're after. <laughs> that is the wrong socket, fella. I'm glad I made this homemade jalopy. Imagine trying to beat this thing around with screwdrivers. That was where did we get to on that, like 40 or 52 or something. That's why I make sure I'm doing both sides equal turns. Good, I can see my ring gear in there, so we should be able to measure this and then divide it by the number two. Hey girl. Hey. What are you doing? Hey. 
Okay, there's 55 on that side. Yeehaw! It's a boot time. Well, we got more rotational force now. Let's just make sure our other one's good. Then we're going to make sure we're within our 25 to 45 inch pound spec for GM standards. You got to be really close over here. Yeah, I'd say it should be him, so because that amount of force should be exerted right across us. So we're at 55. There. All right. Now, sucky for this. We get to take it all back apart. What are you doing with that? I'm powering it on. Why'd you turn it on, Evan? Let's see what All right. Let's see where our rotational force is now. We are at 25, right on the money, bouncing 25 to 30. And we're supposed to be 25 to 45. Yeah, we're pretty steady, 25 to 30. If I go nice and steady, we're about 25 to 30. So we're within spec, so that's good. Now, I'm gonna take and flip it over so we can see our ring gear in there. So we can see the ring gear through the vent hole that's down in that hole down there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up our dial indicator to measure how much backlash we have here in the pinion. Divide that in half and that should give us our spec here which I think was five to seven thousandths is what they, what they wanted. We have to be super close. If not, I think it said that we get three thousandths change for each notch that we go and you can see we're not even on a notch we're not on a notch on that side we're not on a notch on this side but being that we're on the low end of our rotational drag we can always tighten them so let's the sucky part is my dial indicator is magnetic <laughs> and this is aluminium so we're set up here with the dial indicator. I've got it set on the bench and everything's pretty stationary. And we can feel where it engages in the gear. So we should be able to get an accurate reading. And I think we're going to be kind of high because I think we're about 30 thousandths here. So I just want to zero out my dial indicator. That's zero. So we're going from zero to 25. So half of 25 is what, 12 and a half. So let's look up, see what spec is. It'd be awesome if we're within spec the first time. Yeah, so zero to 25 quite consistently. I'll stick my hand in the hole just to be sure. The ring gear is not moving, I, I doubt that it is. No, nope, it's not. We're coming stop to stop. Yeah, we're going zero to 25, so we're half that. So according to service data, 3 to 10 is the spec, 5 to 7 is preferred. So let's see, we need to take, we want the pinion, or the drive gear to move into the pinion. Alright, that's what we want. So we're going to back this one off. Now let's say you get approximately 3 thousandths change for every notch. So I'm going to take, and we're going to move it to that notch and then to that notch. We're going to back it back off. And then we're going to do just the opposite on the other side. Let me get a half inch ratchet here. Do I still got one over here? Oh. Back off just a smidge more. Yeah, that's the blind one. There's that. All right, now technically. We should be able to line up in there. All right, now if we just, on the other side, we want to go with that full notch and a half or whatever that was. And we should come back up to our torque spec. On this side, we're going to start tightening. Let me just mark where I'm going to go. Not that notch, but that notch there. And what I want to do is we're going to take the torque wrench and see if that's where it puts us. 
because we still want the correct amount of preload while we're moving this is what I would assume. I know you guys probably don't have the best vantage point, but frankly, I just want this thing out of my life. Another side we're going to tighten. Oh, super close. There's our torque spec, and boom, we are almost right on the money. Wow, this is almost like... In theory, it should do this, and then it actually does. So I'm going to take that just that little bit further so we line up in a notch. Just so we know before we take it all back apart. And i got to go get some estimates done and a few other things done. Oh, you know what? I need a little extension. It's got me Katie Wampus here. Right, that's got me lined up in my tooth. And then, to be safe, we'll check our rotational torque. And that was that rolled down 25 to 45. Sure that is good. And we are just a smidge over 25. 28, we'll call it. All right, now we'll measure our backlash again. Oh, how do we have this thing set? This really doesn't matter as long as we can get to what we need to get to. Turn that thing on. Okay, let me zero this out now that I know I've got a good starting and stopping point. We are going 15, 16, 17. Oh baby. Who's good at math? Let's call it 18. Half 18 to what? Nine? Something like that. Let me just make sure it's consistent. Actually it is consistent on about 17. So half of that. We're golden, baby. got a good vantage point now but hopefully you can see what's happening here so there's about 17 thou and back to zero 17 it's pretty consistent so what's that put us at eight and a half thou of backlash in the ring gear and that is almost perfect according to spec that's what Chevrolet wants and then our rotational force of course is what they want we're about the 25 inch pounds of rotating force show you that because I know you don't believe me or just in case you want to see it for yourself so we're going to be looking at this scale up here when I rotate it let me hold it on here you can see it comes just between 25 and 50 so we're right on the edge of the spec it's could, probably because we're using AMS oil severe gear. That's how slippery that stuff is. She's slippery. So about 25 to 30. So I'm happy with that. Everything is within spec. All right, now the good news is we get to tear it all back apart because we need to seal it up. We use old Brooksy over here. You don't, you break on me, you son of a monkey. There she is, that side's locked in because technically we don't have to move this side again. We can put our seal and stuff in now, but we're not gonna, just in case when we do the other side, something really naughty happens. So we're gonna flip her over. Everything feels good. You know what, you probably shouldn't have bent that over. Why you ding dong? Because we didn't check the gear pattern yet to make sure that it looks good when we're turning in the forward direction. Oh, I'm so stupid. I'm always putting the cart ahead of the horse here. So we're gonna get over here where we can see our gear in there. And then we're gonna put a little bit of marking compound on it. And then we're gonna spin it around town and see what things look like. It does have some gear oil on it now. 
Okay, let's do that. And we'll spin it in the forward direction and see what we have for a gear pattern. It should, it should be good. Unfortunately, like I said, I could not measure any of the backlash prior to taking it apart because this bearing had come loose. So I've got some gear marking compound brought to you by Permatex, not a sponsor. We're going to put it on an acid brush. It's kind of like toothpaste. And then we're going to go in there and I'm going to paint up my gears. We'll get at least as many teeth as what is on the pinion. We're going to hit both sides of it, the drive side and the coasting side. Get it good slobbered up. I'll show you when, when I'm done here, but I actually need to see for this part. Believe it or not, usually I give you guys the advantage, the vantage point. But just have you know what I'm doing here. There's different types of gear marking compounds you can use. I find this stuff works pretty well. Then we need to be able to hold some resistance on it while we spin it over. We can have a look-see what kind of pattern we have. And what we're trying to achieve is the wear pattern that's already in the gear. You know, good contact, not too deep. general rule we didn't change the pinion depth on this thing because we didn't change the bearings so we didn't have to reset or check any of that so I'm hoping in theory that everything is good okie dokie that's why I make sure I've got good even lines around here that way I'm not getting any false positives from my brush strokes Okay, here we go. There, yeah, set this to the side. Now this stub, can I stick this stub in this side just to hold some resistance? No, it's not going to do anything because there's such things as spider gears. Man, I don't, I don't know nothing. I'm going to hold some resistance just on the carrier itself. Of course, this is backwards. This is the coast side. drive side. Just trying to hold some resistance against it. Alright, now we're going to look in on our wear pattern and I'll show you guys here in a memento after I get the phone. So when I look in here at our wear pattern this is the drive side of the gear, and I see the majority of our pattern, I don't know how good it's going to show up on camera, is down towards the toe, towards the inside of the ring gear on the drive side. And on the coast side of our gear, it's darn near perfect. It's a little, little bit high. So I think we're going to make an adjustment here. I wish I could have gotten the original pattern just to see, because I hate having noisy gear sets. But hopefully you can see that. So as a general rule, when you get a pattern lamp, I mean the coast side is dang near perfect. Let me see if I can see on the old ring gear, the wear pattern for the drive side. Of course, I have no idea how long this thing was running around loose. But typically when you get like that heel or the toe on the drive side, and out towards the heel on the coast side, usually that's pinion depth. Uh, pinion being set too deep into, um, you know, into the ring gear. I'm curious to know because it's a worn gear set if we induced a little bit of backlash into it. You know, if that would be beneficial to us. And I think that's what I'm going to do. To be honest with you, I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend my tab back up. Please don't break. And then uh, I'm going to come back. We're going to give it just like three thousandths. So 
I'm going to do that, you know, we'll um, back the right side off, tighten the left side up, retorque it, and then just double check that to see if just inducing that, just that little bit of backlash being that it is a used gear set, which is always, you know, a variable, and then keep our backlash within tolerance, but at least on the high side of the tolerance. So we can look in there now. I don't know if this light's the best light, but on our drive side, we have full contact all the way around. And then our coast side, we've got full contact. I'm pretty happy with that. Like I say, for a used gear set, hopefully you guys can see that. But we definitely have good full contact, good transfer. Or as good as we're going to get without changing pinion depth. So as a general rule, like if I was taking a gear set out, you know, a used gear set to put, let's say we're just going to throw some carrier bearings in it, that would be my habit, is I would check the backlash before I even took it apart, check the gear pattern to see what it is. You know, if there's no other complaint than noisy bearings, then you know, I just put them back where they were. So we're going to take and we're going to loosen this side up here a little bit, if we can. I can do it without falling over here. I marked it where, where it was or where it's going to go. We're going to back it off about one turn. Just this way here we can put the case halves together easy and then I'm going to set it back together and of course we could, you know, this one doesn't have to go back exactly where it was. The one that changes our depth is on the other side. I just want to make sure we're not going to have any resistance. So there we've backed off one full turn. Technically when we put that together we can, you know, we'll torque it down. It should end up about where it was and we can check our rotational torque and it's not gonna change the depth of our ring gear onto our pinion, if that makes sense to you. It's been like YouTube Central today. Can I tell you? Tell me how to fix my car. So there's that. Now we have to clean up the case halves here. Of course, they were already clean when I started, as far as the bris is concerned. But we need to clean it up because we need to use a sealer. We're gonna get all the gear oil and stuff off. We're gonna clean her up with some good old brake parts cleaner. We're gonna spray her down with some surface prep. And we're gonna put some anaerobic sealer on it, some of the red stuff. It's what they use from the factory on these, so it seems. Well, like I can say, make sure you already have everything, you know, clean before you, you begin, because it makes this process a whole lot quicker. Once you have both case halves clean, get yourself some Permatec. Surface prep, not a sponsor. You always gotta get a new can because you can never find your old can. And if you do, the aerosol is gone on it anyway, so just... New can. Spray that on your both halves. Like I said, make sure they're clean and dry. And then uh, go find something to do for a few minutes. Like maybe take care of your tools and then uh, get your anaerobic sealer, which is also, you can't find it, and if you do, you don't have enough to do the job anyways. It doesn't really fit in my caulk gun too well here, because it's not a metal tube. Let's see, we're going to bring her around town. Oh, I friggin' knew it. As soon as Vanessa leaves, that phone rings. If this is a YouTuber, I swear I'm going to chuck this phone against the wall. It's not. South Main Auto. All right, phone call sorted. Wednesday, don't let me forget to write down an appointment for Wednesday. Wednesday. Jay, will you, will you write something on the board over there for me? Yeah. So I don't forget. Just write down Wednesday, Melissa. Uh, I think she drives a Chevy, Chevy Traverse. It's making a no, uh, pop and noise when she turns the steering wheel. Sounds like strut bearings to me, but. Markers are in the top of the blue uh, 
cart over there to your left by the garbage can. So I just want to spread around the sealer here. So you said uh, Melissa. Melissa, yeah, just right on Melissa. I know who it is. Yeah, Wednesday. Noise when turning steering wheel. It says slow speeds turning in town. She hears this noise. The way she describes it sounds like a strut bearing. But her husband says it's probably a ball joint, so we'll put ball joints in it first. <laughs> <laughs> No, we won't do that. We only do that if the internet tells us to do that. If they say, hey, I saw this on YouTube. We change this part. Absolutely. You tell me what part to change. We'll put parts in that thing all day long for you. All right, we've applied it to one surface as instructed per one set of instructions. There are dowels lined up there. I don't think there's anything else that needs to go in the box. We'll get our bolts back in. We'll snug it up, then we'll torque these all down. Then we'll reset our torque on the side of the drive gear. Carrier bearing, whatever you want to call it. And we should be good. Should be. Think it's last words. It's amazing how it just keeps going. Fifty three again. We're going to call it. Feels good. I feel happy about it. We're going to peen that one over. Wouldn't that be some crap if that one broke right at that given time? <laughs> uh, you want to hear swear words on SMA? You'd hear them, folks. Let's see where our. my mind. Yeah, we're still at our 25 to 30 bit of rotational force. So I'm happy with that. Okay, now we're just, I'm just going to run around the case bolts. I think they were 35. I'll just double check all of them. They should be pretty close. And I think we're right back to where we started. Alright, good. They're all good. So I did that in the back ass for his order. But that's okay. Got some red goods. <laughs> Watch out, folks! Give her one final check. I say we have a good drive side pattern. We also have a good coast side pattern. At least for a set of used gears. Now our backlash is, we are, because I had to induce a little bit of backlash into that to get our pattern good. Um, our backlash is on the maximum side of the scale, which I feel is just because we're using, you know, used gears, you know, so we have, you know, of course, you know, it doesn't look like much on camera, but we're on the high side of our scale. So that's that folks, we're back to where we started, or at least to where you saw we started. I'm going to take and continue on putting it back together. Now on these Chevrolets, the left side axle seal, so this is on the driver's side in the front, is often misdiagnosed as a leaky seal because the vent here itself leaks. Now these have an O-ring on them that seals. And I think a long time ago, GM had a Bolton out where if you took these out and you wrapped them with Teflon tape is what they said, and then you put them back in. Um, I don't know if that Bolton applies to this vehicle, but it's always my habit, I'll just take some. <laughs> Permatex, not a sponsor. Uh, pipe dope. Of course, this stuff's starting to harden up on me a little bit. And I'll wipe it around with threads. We're probably going to have to wipe this around with our fingers. And then put them in, and this seals them up pretty good, despite you know the fact that it has an O-ring also. Uh, so usually something like this 
works pretty well. Keeps these things from peeing all over the place and giving you the false sensation that you have a leaky axle seal. And the biggest thing when you're putting these things in, make darn sure that you start them by hand. These plastic threads, you can strip these things real easy, or cross thread them, I should say. Run that in by hand. Take the old 24 socket. Run it down, we'll snug it up just a bit. <coughs> then we're gonna put the axle seals in it. Of course, then we gotta put the other half of the axle shaft back in. Those are the ones you say leak through the threads, right? Yeah. Like I said, I thought they had a service bolt on a long time ago, I remember. I remember hearing something about it years ago. Back when I was a kid. <laughs> so tighten her down. Just snug her up a little bit. You don't want to go too far. You always you take it to the point of crack, so you went too far, and then you got to buy a new one. So that's how we're going to put the axle seal on this side. And then on this side over here, this is the disconnect side for the four-wheel drive. We'll put all the jiggly bits back in there. Uh, the little stub shaft goes in there and the shift fork and all of that stuff. But uh, we're going to call it quits because frankly we need this thing together. But you guys are always saying you wanted to see some gear videos. And uh, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to do that. All right, folks, that's it. Almost forgot about you. It's the uh, next day or day or two later. Anyways, that front differential went good. Uh, Jason put it back in the front of that Chevrolet or GMC, I guess it was, the Yukon. Uh, took it for a ride. Friends, nice and quiet. Four-wheel drive works. Uh, no longer peeing out the axle seal. Like I said, it was our original customer complaint, uh, which I guess had its own hidden blessing by finding that broken clip and then discovering that, you know, the carrier bearings were wasted there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that process of uh, you know, at least on that particular style, how to, you know, set it up, so to speak. Uh, I would have done it a little differently, uh, you know, had I uh, was able to measure the backlash and get the wear pattern on the initial, you know, gear set uh, prior to taking it apart. But in this case, you know, given the circumstance and being the fact that bearing backed off, you know, that was, you know, there was no way to achieve that. So set it up to factory specs, even though it's used gear. You know look at your wear pattern and see you know and i think on that one it kind of indicated to us with that you know heel toe wear drive side versus coast side that you know we had some pinion depth adjustments that could have been made uh but we were able to increase the backlash and get our wear pattern uh, where it looked nice but the good news is it's in it works it's quiet so everybody should be happy and i hope you guys are happy why don't you head on down there and be happy in that comment section leave a question comment criticism concern while you're down there, subscribe, ring that bell. And just remember, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.